My name is Alyssa Abraham. I'm the community outreach rep for Carrington College in Mesa. And we'll get started here. We'll talk a little bit about the uh, programs at Carrington and then go into our um, scholarship topic. Um, what we offer are um, basically certificate and associate degree programs for healthcare careers. So everything from medical billing and coding, medical assisting, pharmacy technology, veterinary assisting, physical therapy technology, physical therapy assisting, dental, ass dental assisting, and dental hygiene. So in Mesa, we're located at uh, Southern and Alma School, just right off the US 60. We also have campuses in Phoenix and in Tucson and in several of the Western states. So we'll go ahead here and get started. So, okay, we're just going to share a couple of uh, fun little um, healthcare facts with you here today. The storage capacity of the human brain exceeds four terabytes. Interesting to know. The brain does not feel pain, and a sneeze can travel 100 miles an hour. So. Um, with that being said, we'll move on. You can see um, all the locations of our campuses throughout the western United States. In June, we merged with uh, Carrington College of California, which really enabled us to um, share resources just for the betterment of our students. And I'm going to spend a lot of time on this slide, uh, basically discussing um, the programs that we offer um, at our Mesa campus. Uh, we'll start off with our medical assisting, and most of these are nine-month certificate programs. Um, with those programs, a student will go to class Monday through Thursday for four hours a day, either 8 to 12, 1 to 5, or 6 to 10, just depending on what works with, uh, with your lifestyle, your schedule. So you can also work part-time and uh, have plenty of time for homework as well. Um, medical assisting, like I said, is a nine-month certificate class. Um, the lab, everything we do is very, very hands-on at Carrington because it is healthcare. The lab actually looks like you're um, in a hospital, complete with a nurse's station because our students also learn the administrative part of medical assisting. And then we have all the dummies that are in the lab that are programmed uh, so our students learn to take vitals, blood pressure, give injections, and blood draws. Uh, next, we'll go on uh, pharmacy technology. Again, the classroom looks like you're in a retail pharmacy. Um, our students go on to work at uh, Walgreens, CVS. They can work in uh, compounding pharmacies. They learn to make lip balm and some sunscreen. Um, they can also work in hospitals because they learn uh, to make the chemotherapy drugs. And some go on to uh, work for pharmaceutical companies as well. A physical therapy assistant is one of our two-year associate degrees. Um, a PTA will work under a physical therapist either in a, a rehab facility or a clinic. Uh, physical therapy tech is a nine-month certificate program, um, and that focuses more on the exercise around physical therapy. In fact, um, the students um, leave that program as um, certified personal trainers and well, as well. They can work in a gym for a chiropractor. Um, a lot of opportunities there. They also have um, an affiliation with the Phoenix Rattlers and the Phoenix Mercury so that um, the students do a sports massage on the professional athletes. So they get a lot of hands-on experience that way. Uh, let's see, we'll go on to dental assisting, a nine-month uh, certificate program. Um, students learn to do sealants, take um, impressions, make whitening trays. They learn traditional and um, digital x-rays and also learn um, the most common um, software that's used in a dental office, so they again can work in um, the administrative front desk, makes them more marketable. Um, dental assistant can be a great way to start in uh, the field of dentistry. I know a woman who started off as a dental assistant and became a regional manager for a large dental company. Another went on to be an office manager in a dentist office, so a great place to start. Um, dental hygiene is one of our two-year programs. Um, we operate a dental clinic that is free to the public, and that's where our students do their clinicals. So they can do um, cleaning exam, x-ray, and some treatment for periodontal disease, and our school is actually run by um, a dentist. So uh, pretty impressive to see a 30-chair clinic when you walk in. Uh, next, we'll go into medical billing and coding, a nine-month program, a great career if you want to be involved in healthcare but don't want to have so much one-to-one -one patient care. Uh, can also be done remotely and all um, computer-based. 
And we'll talk about uh, veterinary assisting next. Um, the vet lab, we have all the, the dummy dogs, so student lear students learn to do um, pet CPR. They learn all the diagnostic tests, restraints, nail trims, and they also bring their own animals um, to class to work on. So there are always dogs, cats um, in the lab. I was in the other day, they were doing an iguana nail trim. Um, there's a bunny living there now, so a lot of activity. So um, one of the programs I'm really excited about is our degree completion. We've just added that. Um, and what it is, it's an associate's degree that can be done online after a student completes a nine-month uh, certificate program. So they can get their certificate in one of our programs, go to work, and then complete their associates in health studies online. And a lot of times you could go to work and have an employer then um, assist you with paying tuition. So that's kind of an overview of uh, the programs that we offer. Um, accreditation. Um, we are, have a regional accreditation by the, I won't even read all this, the ACCJCWASC. Uh, and like I said, it's a regional accreditation. What accreditation does is it lets the, um, the public and prospective students know that certain standards of quality have been met. So something you always want to ask when you're looking at schools. Some of the benefits of going to Carrington College, we have a dedicated student finance department. Uh, we will work one-on-one -on -one with you. You'd be assigned uh, one specific advisor. Um, we work with all different types of grants, um, scholarships, and loans, and the great majority of our students do use financial aid. Uh, support from faculty and staff. Um, classes are small, usually about 25 students, and all of our faculty have um, experience in the field. Career services, I can't really say enough about this department. Um, this is the department. Each one of our certificate students um, does a six-week externship that's included at the end of their program. Career services finds that externship for them and places them on site based on what the student's interest is, where they live, even down to um, a good personality match. And a lot of our students are then placed um, from their externship. Career services also works with our students when they graduate. Uh, to help them look for work, help them um, interview, interviewing skills, write their resume, and we place about 72% of our graduates in careers. Student services is um, a free tutorial service if you just need a little extra help with a certain class or developing study skills, they're there to help you as well. And the Aspire program is a free and confidential um, counseling program that's available. And then we're also part of the DeVry family of schools. I am not a student finance advisor, but we'll talk just briefly um, about uh, financial aid. We work with um, a variety of different resources. Uh, agency funding and tribal funding is also something um, that we can help you with. If you are interested in that or eligible, we have an agency department that will point you in the right direction to get that, um, the right form started so you can work with that. And we also have some federal work study programs available on campus as well. Okay, now we'll talk about um, scholarships. You go, oh gosh, is there a scholarship for me? What's out there? You know, scholarships can be based on a number of things, ethnicity, special talents, or characteristics. I mean, it's a little crazy, but I mean, there's a scholarship for people with red hair. There's scholarships for people with, you know, who are short, who are tall. Um, a lot of different things out there. A lot of companies have scholarships, Dr. Pepper, Twitter, Wells Fargo, Burger King, and those are all bigger companies. But you also want to think about smaller companies, and they may not have a scholarship link on their homepage, but it's a good idea to sometimes just, you know, go to a company's website and type in scholarship in the search field and see what comes up. Um, talk to, you know, your family's friends, see where they work, see if they have a scholarship. It may only be a few hundred dollars, but you get several of those, and they can really help out to help supplement, you know, paying for your college education. And scholarships are wonderful things, but um, we also want to talk about some scams to avoid when you're applying. Um, first of all, you should never pay a fee to receive an award. And don't ever give out your credit card or bank information to receive a scholarship. If they guarantee you a scholarship or if they use phrases like high success rate, you may want to be very careful about that. Or if they say, oh, it's easy, no work involved, be careful. I mean, at minimum, you'll need to submit, submit an application. A lot of times, you'll need to submit a transcript, letters of recommendation, you know, or an essay along with all that. Um, they should provide valid contact information upon request, a valid email address, phone number, and mailing request, mailing address as well. 
If you receive a, an odd text, email, phone call saying you've won a scholarship and you haven't applied for that, ask them where they got your information and then follow up with that party and verify that it is a valid award. Um, you should never feel pressured or stressed um, when applying for a scholarship. And uh, watch out for things that say they're exclusive, exclusive, and this is the only way you can obtain this um, award, too. And even if a scholarship has um, an official name or an official looking seal, it can still be a scam. Sometimes they'll use the word government or education um, in the name. So you still want to be careful um, and keep in mind that the federal government um, does not endorse a private business. So keep that in the back of your head as well. And also if your questions aren't answered directly, be careful. Usually a funding committee is more than happy um, to answer any questions about you know, the award or the application process. So, and you can look at several different websites. Um, you know, Fast Web is one. You can go in and search um, suspect a scam and they'll give you some good pointers on where to go to do some more research. So now that we talked about the tips of the, the bad things and the scams to avoid, we can talk about some tips to help you win um, some scholarships. First of all, apply only if you're eligible. Make sure you read all the, the fine print and make sure that you're a good fit for that scholarship. Um, complete the application in full. Make sure you don't leave any questions um, blank on that. And follow the directions to a T. Uh, submit everything that is requested and don't submit anything that isn't requested or you could be disqualified. So, and like I said earlier, you're usually going to be asked to submit an application, letters of recommendation, an essay, and transcripts or, or um, you know, a variety of those items. Uh, neatness counts. Uh, everything's done on a computer, so if you're asked to print it, I'd question that. Um, and then write an essay that makes a strong impression. The essay is really important because the funding committee is looking for an individual that is worth their investment. So you want to write an essay that makes a very strong impression. It doesn't have to be about a big monumental you know, experience. It can be about something that's very small and personal. But if it's told with meaning, it can make you a great candidate, and make you stand out from the rest of the applicants. Watch all your deadlines, and you might want to impose deadlines on yourself because most scholarship committees will not um, extend a deadline. And make sure your application gets where it needs to go. Um, I would suggest putting your name on each page and numbering each page as well to make sure everything is there. And be sure to make a backup file, um, both electronic and hard copy, just in case anything does get lost along the way. And be sure to proofread it very, very carefully. It's so easy. I know I do it myself when I'm working on a document and I've been too close to it uh, to miss a, a, a simple you know, grammatical error that if someone else proofreads it for you, they can catch. And then ask for help. Uh, don't hesitate to contact um, the scholarship committee, the funding agency, uh, if you have any questions at all. They're usually very, very happy to, uh, to help you uh, or to give you any advice if you have questions about that. So that kind of um, wraps up my uh, presentation. So, time for questions. <laughs> yes, here we go. As I scoop back in. Uh -huh. <laughs> scoop Thank back in. Thank you so much. That was actually really interesting. Um, I was thinking in my head, what happens if you apply to a scholarship that may have ended up being a scam? Is there something that the students can do at that point? You know, legally, I really um, can't address that. What I would do, as I said, um, fastweb.com is a really great site. Uh, that has a lot of information on scams on it. Right. And you can go in there and search suspect a scam. Okay. And I think that is really the best way to approach that. So you may want to note that site. Yeah, that's helpful. And if you haven't obviously applied, you have the websites to do so that are safe and secure. Yes, and we verified. have Yeah, we have a whole list so too. If great. anybody wants those, I can easily send those along. Great. Mm -hmm. Well, before we start questions, I wanted to ask you, uh, Alyssa, how can they reach out to you? Do you have a specific email? Can they just yep. look on the website? Um, sure do. You can uh, email me at a Abraham at carrington.edu, so okay. it's A-A-B-R-A-H-A-M, just like Lincoln, at carrington.edu. Uh, you can also text me or call me 602-743-8315.
Thank you so much, and I'm happy to say that we have all these phone numbers from you and other schools that are making mm -hmm. it easier for students to reach out via text or call, and that's Perfect. great personalization. We really appreciate it. So let's kick it off with some questions. Thanks again for chatting us, uh, the questions that you have. How about this one? Does Carrington offer a clinical psychology program? No, we do not. Um, actually, the complete list that was up on the screen for a while is the full list of all the programs at all of the campuses okay. um, throughout the Western United States. Okay, great. So we might want to put that list back up for just a sure, few minutes. Sure, let's we can scroll through um, and give you that slide so you can take a go. look. There we go. And we'll leave it up for a few minutes as we chat here. Um, one of the other questions that they were asking about is, I believe, the length of the pharmaceutical technician. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. That's a nine-month program. Okay. So all of our certificate programs are nine months. Okay. Um, students go to class Monday through Thursday for four hours a day. And the sections are either 8 to 12 in the morning, 1 to 5 in the afternoon, or 6 to 10 p.m. in the evening. Right. Okay. And, and typically the way the class is structured, the first two hours are lecture, followed by two hours of lab. So you get to apply what you've just learned in class with a hands-on experience right there. Wonderful, that's great. And again, as Alyssa was saying, there's a lot of options if you're not interested in being in the one-on-one patient care. Mm -hmm. You know, there's the pharmacy side of things. Right, pharmacy is great, especially if you um, have an interest in dealing with the public. If you enjoy customer service or retail, this is a great way to be involved in healthcare. Okay. Healthcare between um, 2010 and 2020, 28 percent of all new jobs are going to be in healthcare. So wow. it's a great industry to be in. Um, another one too is medical billing and coding. If you enjoy working on a computer all day, you know what a great thing to do. Um, a friend of mine several years ago went back to school for medical billing and coding, and she ended up working on site at Banner Hospital oh. for a year, and now she works at home. She still works for the same company, but she works out of her home That's great. doing medical billing and coding. Her husband travels a lot. She goes oh with him. Goodness. She can work anywhere. That's amazing. And you're still in the medical field. So you're right. still making an impact. You're still helping people. And if that's your passion, why not? Away, I mean, right? just like the dental assistants I was talking about earlier, they started off as dental assistants, went on to be managers. It's the same right. thing for, you know, a medical assistant can do the same thing. So there are options out there that aren't just one-to-one -one patient care. Great. So we asked about the pharmacy tech one. Does Carrington offer degrees for RN or BSN? Uh, not BSN. We do offer um, an associates in RN at one of the Phoenix campuses. Okay, okay, great. So that's good. And you can go on the website, find out more about the location, as we mentioned. You bet. Um, and everything like that if you're interested in that particular program. So that was a good, that was a good yeah. segue into the next question, yeah. too. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, it is, it's really fascinating to come and tour campus. Mm -hmm. uh, just because everything is so hands-on and you really do feel at times like you're in a medical facility. So, and I would encourage you guys to um, visit as many campuses as you possibly can. There are so many schools, but it's great to go when class is in session. So you yeah. see how class is conducted, how the students interact with the faculty. So uh, it's a great time to do that and take the time to, to do that. To do that. And they can do that anytime, even you if You bet. They, if they can walk in. You yeah. can walk in. Um, it's best if you can make an appointment. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't have to wait. So, you know, usually it's not a long wait, but then you wouldn't have to wait at all. Right. Um, campus tour will take you about an hour and a half. Okay, you can meet wonderful. with a counselor, tour the campus. You can meet with financial aid at the same time. Great. And we've been talking and telling students, actually, that if you're interested in a college or two or three, you may want to do that. Just visit the mm -hmm. colleges or universities. They're happy and opening their doors to you so you can go kind of feel the vibe and see if you like it. Right. And that helps a lot in your decision-making process. So that's great tips. Let's go uh, for more questions here. We have a couple more. Can I shadow classes at the as a high school student? So you said taking a tour. You can take a tour right. um, anytime you want to come in as um, as a senior. You can do that a couple of times a year. We have what we call crash a class. Oh, cool! So where you can come in and uh, and basically shadow a student, you know, through through the day. Okay. So we usually have that information will be on the website, or you know, we'll send out emails if if you're on our database. Okay, and can we uh, say the website again? It's Carrington. You bet, carrington.edu. Okay, wonderful. So you can find out more about that because those are things that they can do now while they're still right. kind of in search. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Great. Great questions, guys. Next question we have. Uh, sorry. I'm sorry. The, the one thing I thought about along that same line of thought, uh, we'll also have an open house sometime in January. I okay. don't have a date on that. It's usually during the week. So that's also a good time to come in, you know, and take a tour through campus. So. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you'll have some information oh, yeah. before then. You bet. All right. So now let's go to the next question. Okay. Thank you for your patience, everybody. All right. <laughs> let's see. What is Carrington's most popular program? Uh, 
The two most popular are medical assisting okay. and medical billing and coding. Oh, mm -hmm. great. And I think the next question was on medical billing and coding, mm -hmm. and I believe it has to do with the length. Let's take a look. How long is it? Yeah, how long is that one? Again, that's a nine-month program. Nine months. Uh -huh. okay. All of our certificate programs are nine months, um, and included in the nine months is the six-week externship. Oh, so that is okay. the last, that's actually the last six weeks of your class time. You know, we take that very, very seriously. It's just as important as all the time in class. Yeah, so you're going through the real world mm -hmm. kind The of real experience. world experience. And a lot of employers actually contact us and say, hey, we're ready to, to hire. You know, we'll have an extern. Wow. It almost works as a working interview, oh, you know, for a lot of our students. So have you noticed that students get hired right after they graduate Carrington? I mean, I'm curious. Um, about a third of our students are placed uh, from their extern sites, which okay. is great. And then we place 80... Uh, 72% of our graduates in careers upon graduation. Wow, 72%. So, so that's great. It's encouraging. Yes. You can start working start, right after. Start working right away. Our career services department will work with our graduates, uh, they say, until they're fired. Uh, <laughs> so either until you find a, a, a job and go to work or you tell them to stop, lo stop looking for you. Okay, great. So we're asking to repeat the phone number, uh, your phone number. My phone number. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you bet. My phone number is 602-743-8315. My a email, aabraham at carrington.edu. Perfect. And this Alyssa Abraham, so if you guys have more questions for her, she's happy to answer them for you. You can also do your research on the website before you reach out to her if you have specific mm -hmm. questions after that. Um, and if you have an interest in a couple of these programs, too, feel free. Yeah, to we reach usually out. tell people, too, you know, don't just limit it to one. You may yeah. come in and think, oh, I want to be a medical assistant. And then you may see the physical therapy tech lab and go, wow, this is what I want to do. Right. Um, one of the things we like to do, too, at Carrington is a lot of giving back to the community. Our dental assistants um, help out every year with Hope Fest in downtown Phoenix, and they assist the dentist in, you know, servicing the underprivileged. Yeah. Our physical therapy tech students work with Barrows Neurological oh on goodness. days on the lake with the um, paraplegics and quadriplegics. Oh. Uh, so there's a lot of different opportunity. Our vet assisting students work with a couple of, uh, we were just at Barktoberfest with a local, oh, yeah. uh, with a local <laughs> shelter group and they did free toenail trims for dogs in the booth. We'll be at Wolfstock and Chandler, you know, in a couple of weeks doing the same thing. So there's a lot of opportunity. Uh, to get some hands-on and to also give back to the community at the same time. That's great, and I mean, I'm a fan. I loved animals. Mm -hmm. um, I never did the veterinary program, but I'm hearing that you have the animal dummies and the whole, yes. you know, setup over there. How do you feel that you compare to other medical programs in the veterinary industry? I mean, having all the facilities there ready to go. The facilities are wonderful. I mean, it's really, it's such a great hands-on experience um, that we don't have a veterinary veterinarian yeah. degree obviously it's a the vet assisting nine month program but it's phenomenal I mean you walk in it's it's very impressive mm -hmm. um, it's actually the department is run by um, uh, the program director is a veterinary assistant she's worked in the field for many many years as are all of our program directors so and again a, a third of those students are hired you know from their yeah. extern sites yeah. yeah that's wonderful yeah so if you're interested in those programs again you can reach out to Alyssa or look on the website and ask us I think we have time for one or two more questions so we're going to try to squeeze one in really, really quick, guys. Sure. Thanks again for that. Um, and while we're having that typed out here, we'll just take a second to uh, say thank you again for joining the Digital College Fair. Yes. Sir. All right. So here it is. Are there any steps uh, high school students can take to be ready for Carrington? Uh, you know, I would think maybe possibly even doing some volunteer work, okay. you know, in the community. That's always a great way. Um, maybe if you're interested in medical assisting, go get your CNA. Oh, that's, um, that's usually a six to eight week course. That's something you could do. Some schools, you know, would, would offer that. Some options in the community may offer mm -hmm. that, that you could get that. Even taking a CPR class. Yay, you I know? just did that. Good it for you. Wonderful. Good for you. Wonderful. You know, there are things like that that you can prepare for. Yeah. You know, it is very hands-on, you know, and um, that's one of the best things about it, that you're really prepared for an entry-level career in the healthcare field. Wonderful. Well, thank you again, Alyssa Abraham with Carrington College, everybody. Um, right now, we're going to go ahead and, oh, I think we have one more question. Okay. We have time. Thank you for, for asking these questions. It's just a little sometimes hard to get them out because we're going through the chat and then asking them here. But, okay, is there a list of costs for classes anywhere online that they can look at? Uh, the cost is not online. Uh, what you'll want to do is basically just come in and review it all with the counselor. The programs vary. 
So, and uh, like I said, our student finance department is pretty amazing. So we rarely have a student that doesn't enroll due to finances. Okay, great. And you have the information for scholarships and all of that. So again, mm -hmm. thank you, Alyssa. We will keep some of these questions uh, for later. If you have them, keep sending them through the chat. We will keep, keep them and reach out to these uh, colleges for you or you have their information. You can do that personally yourself. Mm -hmm. Thank you again. Thank you. Uh